This is The Motorbike Show. I've been finding out about one of the most iconic bikes in British motorcycling, the Bruff Superior. But what are they actually like to ride? Today, I'm taking a leisurely trip through the Cotswolds with two other Bruff devotees. The legendary builder, Sam Lovegrove, has worked on dozens of Bruff superiors over the years. He's on an SS80 that he's recently restored. Mark Upham is a long-time Bruff nutter and the brand's current owner. He's on an SS100, the sportiest in our trio of bikes. And me, I'm on my 1150 Bruff's Long Distance Tourer. So what's it like to ride? Fantastic, if you'll forgive me for stating the obvious. Everything about it says quality. The impeccable handling, the low torque of the engine, the comfort of the ride. It's the two-wheeled equivalent of a Rolls-Royce Corniche or a drophead Bentley. The quality, engineering quality, is second to none. A lot of people talk about it's just an assembly of various components, like any other motorcycle manufacturer. But of course, it's how you put those components together. You know, you could put those components in a wheelbarrow, but it wouldn't give you a good quality ride. <laughs> so, um, you know, the way George Bruff assembled, designed these motorcycles with those parts was absolutely incredible. To me, it's the tank that sets off a Bruff Superior. You know, that was his design, was it? Absolutely. I love the tank, I love the nickel, the lines, the paintwork, the fact the tank is parallel to the road. It just has such a nice shape. And it's not just about quality and aesthetics. These bikes are still seriously fast, and even today you can cruise along perfectly happily at 60 or 70 miles an hour, which is amazing for a bike built 80 years ago. You mustn't forget that he was, he was a very, uh, good professional sportsman on the motorcycle. So as a younger man, he competed in every event going across Europe. He not only competed in just about every type of event, he actually won most events. Really, on a bruff? Obviously. On a bruff, yeah. But what's seriously fast is also seriously expensive. One of these recently went for a cool 330 grand, setting a new world record. They are in the imagination of every collector that that is the ultimate goal, to own a Bruff Superior or two. But also I think it's got to the point where people are so confident in the investment that um, the price is just going from strength to strength and continuing. And of course it's, there's only a limited amount available. You know, they only made 3,000 machines, the survival rate is somewhere under 2,000. Really? Yeah. 2009. But under Mark Upham's stewardship, Bruff is no longer just a historic mark. Over the last four years, he and a team of mainly French designers have been working on the latest incarnation of the SS100, which is due to become available later in the year. Only the other day I was on a new Bruff Superior, and one minute and the next minute I'd fallen off. <laughs> Are you the first person to crash a new yes, Bruff? Yes, I am definitely the first person. I followed in George Bruff's footsteps. He, of course, won 55 races mm. and was only mounted 54 times, the bike crossing the line once without him. <laughs> Whether the new generation of Bruffs will garner the same love and devotion as the classics we're riding today remains to be seen, but there's no doubt that Bruff will always be one of the most iconic brands in the world. It does have its downside. Does it what? It means I've got to stand here in the cold speaking to you. Yeah, but at the same time, there was an option not to. You could have just said, Henry, I'm not interested, I'm fishing. I think I should have gone fishing. Should you? Yeah. All right, well, come on then. I'll come okay. with you. Sam can put them away. <laughs>